poet and you bring it around with you see that's why many times you will notice that people for example they work hard they work hard they work hard and the bible says it feels like you get all your sueldo all your salary and you put it into pockets with holes and we think that you know if we get promoted life is going to be better so you find out you get promoted you get a pay rise a pay raise but then it's still not enough I'm going to show you why in a little bit, but see, it's part of it. When, when we don't tithe, we need to understand what the tithe does. See? Because of that curse. See, you and I are not under a curse. See, we're not. Okay? We have been redeemed and sanctified. The word sanctify means to set apart for God's use. Okay? You and I have been sanctified. That's why a Christian who sins does not understand the purpose of his redemption. You have been redeemed and you are under grace. And some people say, you know, if you preach grace too much, then it will give license, uh, it will give people license to sin. Because there is no more condemnation, there is no more judgment for you. But we fail to comprehend or understand the purpose of our redemption. You have been set apart, you have been sanctified. You know, even Christ sanctified himself in, in John 17. You and I have been sanctified, that means set apart for the purpose of God. Oftentimes what happens is we just get saved, but we still like to do our own thing. And we abuse that freedom. We have been set free so that Christ can have His way in our lives. Amen? See, that's what He wants. Now, He set us apart. We, the, and remember when I spoke about the blessing of holiness. Holy means to be separated from sin. You are holy. You have been separated from sin. Therefore, you have been separated from the effects of sin, which includes the curse. Now, your money... Your money carries with it a, a uh, tinge of that curse. So your money needs to be set apart. Your money needs to be, to be made holy, set apart from that curse. Because you know what? You were set apart. You were the one set apart. Your money is not you. You are not your money. So when you earn that money from work, from business, from your employer, whatever it is, you know, that money carries within the curse. Now, look at this. This is what, this is what uh, uh, Paul, Jesus, actually through Paul, said in Romans 11.6. For if the first fruit is holy, first fruit is also tithe, by the way. Okay? First fruit is the first crop of the year. And remember when I spoke about tithe, the tithe is the first thing you do with your money. When you receive, the first thing you do is you set aside the tithe. Why? Because that means, well, I'm going ahead of myself. I'll tell you why later on. But watch this. If the first fruit is holy, or the tithe, meaning to say you separate it, then the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. So if you, for example, uh, set apart a portion of your money for God, then the rest is going to be holy. In other words, the tithe, what does tithe mean? 10%. A tithe literally means one-tenth. Okay? Or in percent form, it would be 10%. When you set aside 10%, a tithe of your money, then God blesses everything that's left. He separates it from the curse. See? Now look at this. If you have, uh, you know, some people say, but you know, uh, God owns all my money. All my money belongs to God. And yet, when you check the tithe envelopes, you don't see all their money. See? It's easy to talk. No, 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 pastor, God is my senior, past, uh, my senior partner. If you have a partner in business and he's the senior partner, what should be his minimum percentage of ownership? At least 51%. Don't talk to me about God being your senior partner if you're not giving 51%. You're the senior partner. And yet, all God requires is 10%. That's all. And He says to bring the tithe. See, you don't give the tithe. You bring the tithe. You don't pay the tithe. You bring the tithe. Let's say, for example, 
uh, Angel's car. I borrow Angel's car, right? For a day. At the end of the day, I return the car to his garage. But I have a friend with me. I can't tell my friend, oh, you know what? I gave Angel that car. No, I'm just returning what's his. I didn't give him anything. I returned it. What did he do? I brought the car back to his garage. That's it. I did not give him anything. And if I did not even put back the gas that I used up, nabawasan pa siya. See? I gave, him, I gave it back to him less than what he gave to me. But the point is, I did not give him anything. I simply brought back what is his in the first place. And when he said, bring the tithe, what he's saying is, the tithe has always been mine. The Bible says the tithe is the Lord's. That's why if I go and get his car with or without his permission and I don't return it, you know what that makes me? A car thief. It makes me a car thief. See? And I can always say, oh, I love Angel. Yeah, right. Return the car first. Prove it. I can always say, I love Angel, but I'm always getting from him. I'm always stealing from him. What kind of love is that? See? That's why I said, talk is easy. God is not requiring 51%. He said 10%. 10% is mine. And you see the principle of the tithe even as far back as the garden. Here in the garden, he said, you know what? All these trees, yours. Everything is yours. There's one that belongs to me. This one, don't eat from it. It's mine. See? So even there, of course, that one tree out of the gajillion trees in the garden is not 10%. But at that time, he was already teaching the principle of what belongs to me, you don't touch. See? So God blesses us with an income, but he says 10% belongs to me. Bring back that tithe. See? Now, when we don't, your money is not set apart. The tithe, see here, if the first fruit is holy, if the first fruit is set apart, that's what holy means, set apart. First fruit is tithe. If the first fruit or the tithe is set apart, then everything else, look at that, the lump will also be set apart. It will be, I will separate it from the curse. In other words, you will be made, you, 100% mathematically is always more than 90%. But 100% in God's economy will not go as far a hundred percent without the blessing will not go as far as 90 percent with the blessing you will find out that with that 100 percent somehow he says if you do this he says you know what try me in this test me this is the only time god allows us to test him when it comes to money when it comes to the time and he said try me now in this test me now in this and see if i will not open the floodgates of heaven you know the last time god opened the floodgates of heaven it rained 40 days and 40 nights, and the whole earth was flooded. That's why he said, try me now with this. It's see if I will not open for you the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing such that you cannot contain. In other words, Babaha Anaman. But this time, with Nino Aquino and with Joabad Santos. <laughs> see? Not anymore, with the, not anymore with flood. The last time he opened the floodgates of heaven, it rained 40 days and 40 nights and it covered the whole earth. Even Mount Everest, the Bible says, was covered. The highest peak was covered. So that there was absolutely no land. It was a global flood. 